Hello students, hope you are doing well. Today we are going to discuss another topics from the physical pharmaceutics like spreading coefficient, solubilization, detergency and surface free energy. These all are the remaining topics from the physical pharmaceutics too. This is Suryam, assistant professor, department of pharmaceutics, which to of pharmaceutical education and research. Narsapur. Let us start the topic. First, we will start with spreading coefficient. Spreading coefficient means if any substance is spreading on the another surface, that entire phenomena is known as spreading. And the amount of spreading one molecule on another molecule surface, that is considered as coefficient. As per the definition, it is a parameter to measure of the tendency of a liquid to spread on the second surface is called spreading coefficient. Example, if you observe the oleic acid in water or ointment creams on the skin. What happens if you apply the ointments or creams on the surface, we need to rub it like we need to apply some energy so the ointment or cream which we applied on the skin will spreads on a particular area on the skin surface and this entire phenomenon is known as spreading coefficient as we just now discussed the oleic acid in water also we can take an example of spreading coefficient in this diagram we will be having two surfaces so this is number one surface and this will be the second surface. So if we take this is a first surface on this surface the oil molecules may spread throughout the second surface. This enter phenomena is known as spreading coefficient. Here we need to consider two spreadings. First that is a very slow spreading and second thing is that is fast spreading. So this spreading fast or slow spreadings will be depends on various reasons by the nature of the uh, substance and the nature of the surface or uh, the nature of the second surface which is uh, to be spread over through it. Like just now we discussed spreading coefficient will be in uh, faster in case of uh, in case of some substances and it will be very slower in case of sub substances. So the reasons because basically the spreading coefficient depends on various factors like surface tension. Already we discussed in the previous classes what is surface tension and uh, the detailed uh, class we discussed and the surface tension means the force which acts on surface only. This is known as surface tension. Second uh, factor that is interfacial tension. This is the phenomenon which can form a boundary this is known as interfacial tension. This is also discussed in the previous classes. Adhesive forces, the attraction forces between two same molecules. That is adhesive force, cohesive force. This is the attractive forces between two different molecules. So the surface so the spreading coefficient is mainly depends on the following factors like surface tension, interfacial tension, adhesive forces, cohesive forces as well. To understand the spreading coefficient in detail, we need to discuss about two different conditions like the work of adhesive force. Just now we discussed the spreading coefficient is also depends on the cohesive forces and adhesive forces. So we need to discuss about the work, how much work or how much forces has been applied to uh, get a good uh, spreading coefficient of the substance. And the second thing is work done at adhesive forces. If we discuss in detail about these two uh, forces like adhesive and cohesive forces, we will know the spreading coefficient values. Let us start with the work of cohesive force. The work of cohesive force is defined as the energy or force that required to separate same molecules is known as cohesive 
forces to understand this cohesive force in case of spreading coefficient let us take a same sample in a beaker so this is a sample we can consider it is as water sample and when we apply the force to separate to separate this water molecules in two portions like this here we will get a surface and we will get two different surfaces and this will be one centimeter square and the area of this one will be one centimeter square and here we will be having the same water molecule because we are discussing the cohesive forces at this point we can find a new surface new surface area that is gamma l and in the second part here also we get another new surface area that is also gamma that is also gamma l this is the liquid sample or water sample so as per this concept this work done at cohesive force that is the separation forces between same molecule so in this experiment we got two new surface areas or new surface tensions from the single one here we have initially the single uh, you know liquid or water substance while we are applying the cohesive force on this we have divided into two different portions and at these two different portions we got two new surface areas so this concept can be written in mathematically as wc is equals to gamma l plus gamma l finally we can write gamma uh, wc is equals to gamma 2l so by using this equation we could find the work done at the cohesive force in the second case that is work done at adhesive force so already we discussed adhesive force means what the force the force which acts in between between two different or two immiscible liquids is known as adhesive force to define the adhesive force the energy or force that required to separate two different as we just now discussed two different immiscible liquids is known as work of adhesive force always this work of adhesive force is directly proportional to the adhesive force is directly proportional to the spreading coefficient similarly to understand this adhesive work done at adhesive force we need to take a sample which is immiscible that is two different liquids here like this this is a single sample this is the second sample these two are immiscible each other immiscible liquid to this immiscible liquid if we apply the adhesive force because of this adhesive force it will again divides into two portions we can consider this second part as l this first part as s so while we are applying the adhesive force adhesive force it will be divides into two portions and here will get the new surface tension that is gamma l this is liquid sample and here we also get another new surface tension that is gamma s here only gamma l
and at this portion we as we have a immiscible liquid so the surface tension of this immiscible liquid will be written as gamma ls so the work done at adhesive force can be written as surface tension of the liquid and surface tension of the solid minus the interfacial tension this can be used to measure or to know the work done at adhesive force let us consider this is as second equation as we discussed the spreading coefficient the spreading coefficient that is s is equals to w a minus w c that means work done at adhesive force and work done at cohesive force so let us substitute the w a and w c values in the above equation so it can be written as w a gamma l plus gamma s minus gamma l s minus w c values 2 gamma l here 1 l 1 gamma l gets cancelled so finally this spreading coefficient gamma s minus gamma l s plus gamma l by using this equation we can calculate the spreading coefficient now we'll discuss the applications of spreading coefficient it is the major factor to consider in preparation of ointments lotions and creams because uh, in the example we discuss about uh, the ointments creams and lotions while we are applying on the skin so we it, the ointment or lotion should be spreads easily and uniformly so that is the reason we need to maintain proper spreading coefficient values in preparation of these lotions creams and ointment as well to maintain stability of emulsions like we will be having different types of emulsions oil in water of uh, uh, type of emulsion and water in oil type of emulsion and we will be having multiple emulsions multiple emulsions again different types like oil in water in oil type water in oil and water type of emulsions so we need to maintain proper stability by adjusting the spreading coefficient in tablet coating in tablet coating especially in film coating tablet especially in film coating this spreading coefficient should be maintained because uh, this film coating tablet will be finished very smoothly it is we need to finish it very smoothly so that means we need to adjust the spreading coefficient we need to ensure that all the tablets are undergone proper spreading uh, by this uh, by the dye or not we need to ensure that it also helpful in the absorption of medicament like creams and lotions so we need to have a proper spreading proper spreading on skin that is about the spreading coefficient in detail next we'll start another topic that is solubilization in general solubilization is can be defined as the efficient of dissolving a substance into a solution that is considered as solubilization the ability of a substance to dissolve in a solvent is also known as solubilization here we have another definition that the spontaneous interactions of two or more substances to form a homogeneous molecular dispersion this is also called as solubilization so here if we have two different substances two different substances let us consider this is substance one and we have another substance so this another substance when we mix together they will get uniformly soluble in each other that means there should be dissolving process should be there and this phenomenon is known as this phenomenon is known as solubilization example let us take an example like sodium chloride in water 
in water when we add the sodium chloride as salt in water immediately the sodium chloride will be get dissolves in the water so here the water will acts as a solute here this water will dissolves the salt or sodium chloride this also known as solubilization oleic acid in water so when we are comparing this sodium chloride in water and oleic acid in water this will be high soluble substance and this oleic acid this oleic acid in water we can tell uh, we can say it as a poor solubility and to enhance this poor solubility to maximum solubility by means of to increase the solubility or uh, to enhance the solubility we can uh, do it by adding the surfactants so different surfactant we discussed in the previous in the previous classes positive surfactant negative surfactant amphoteric surfactant and you know like non ionic surfactant so based on the requirement we can add any type of these surfactant so that the solubility will be enhanced by means of the solubility will be increases say for example we discussed just now oleic acid in water as we know that this is having poor solubility property so what we need to do we need to enhance the solubility enhance the solubility property of the oleic acid for that we need to add some surfactant we need to add some surfactant so if we are taking this oleic acid it be is like in oil portion so when we add surfactant to this oleic acid substance all tail portion will form like this and thus it may increase the solubilization property by formation formation of micelle we discussed in detail about this micelle in the previous classes now we'll discuss uh, the applications of the solubility so to uh, maintain the bioavailability we definitely need to have more solubility if you have a low solubility property of the substance or of the drugs the bio uh, the bioavailability will be very less and to form co crystals and polymorphs to improve the drug delivery in some formulations like emulsions especially emulsions in controlled drug delivery system especially in lipid based formulation so we need to uh, you know maintain the proper solubility or we need to uh, you know enhance the solubility if the uh, solubility is poor uh, definitely the solubility will be poor for some substances to avoid this problem to overcome from that problem we need to add surfactants by adding this surfactant we can enhance the solubility so when we increase the solubility we can find all these applications of the particular solubility and the third uh, topic is detergency so this detergency is one of the important topic from this physical pharmaceutics so definition of this detergency it is a process of cleaning of any dirty or any contaminated particles from any surface by solubilizing suspending and emulsifying by adding surfactant this process is considered as detergency to explain this we need to remove the dirty particles or unwanted or you know contaminated particles from a substance and during this removing or uh, cleaning uh, process we need to undergo three different mechanisms so the detergency can be done in three techniques as follows first one solubilizing first we need to solubilize the surface which contains the dirty particles or you know unwanted particles and then we'll go with the suspending we need to suspend the surface which contains dirty and then emulsifying so these three steps will helps to get an ideal detergency example in the pharmaceutical industries uh, we need to clean the ampules ampules 
and syrup bottles cleaning or washing of cloths this can be considered as example of the detergency process so let us discuss how the detergency process or the mechanism will be there so as we discussed in the mechanism of the uh, detergency there are three mechanisms are involving solubilization suspending and emulsifying techniques so how this uh, you know detergency is going to takes place to clean a surface let us discuss step by step process if the dirty particle dirty particles are there on any surface area and to this surface area we need to add surfactants or detergents the surfactants or detergents like sls sodium lauryl sulfate can be added and then while we adding this uh, surfactant and detergents the surface will get wetted after that this cleaning process will done in three steps first one removal of solid dirty particles in the second step removal of insoluble dirty particles in the third process removal of soluble dirty particles and so now this can be said to be converting to foam so here this mechanism is known as dirty in solution and the first technique that is solubilization and this technique suspension or suspending technique suspending technique and this is emulsifying technique and now after this converting into foam we need to add some water for washing after adding this water for washing we can get clean surface thus the mechanism will be takes place to understand this mechanism of detergency let us uh, consider a diagrammatic structure so here we'll be having a surface like this on this surface we have some dirty particles like this and this dirty particles has to be removed this entire phenomenon is known as detergency so how this dirty particles will be uh, you know cleaned as per the previous mechanism by adding by adding detergents or surfactants so what will happen this detergency will be depends on three different mechanisms just now we discussed first one solubilization second one suspending third one emulsification so after adding this detergents or surfactant these dirty particles will be washed off that means the surface this is the dirty surface with dirty particles after adding the detergency now we'll see cleaned surface so 
during this removing of the dirty particles as we just now discussed we have first one solubilization the surface of dirty uh, dirty one second one suspending technique and third one emulsification technique now this surface is said to be removed removed dirty particles now we will discuss the applications of detergency the detergency is uh, having some important roles to eliminate the residual product from any surface area any surface area to avoid the microbial contamination if we uh, not uh, washed properly to the particular uh, like you know surfaces like ampule bottles syrup bottles particularly which we used in the pharmaceutical industries that will undergoes the contamination especially microbial contamination that may reduce the shelf life half life of the particular product so to avoid that problem the detergency or this technique should be done properly and another thing here is to clean the equipments in pharmaceutical industries like tablet uh, you know coating machines tablet compression machines and size reduction equipments all these things will be uh, you know uh, contaminated uh, by batch by batches uh, after one batch we need to uh, start cleaning for the next batch by using this detergency techniques this is in detail about the detergency next we will start another topic surface free energy the surface free energy is also one of the most important topic from this uh, physical pharmaceutics surface free energy may defined as the work that required to increase the area of a liquid is known as surface free energy or we have another definition the potential energy of molecules which help them to remain on the surface is known as surface free energy if more surface energy that may leads to if more surface energy that may leads to more surface area and the more surface area may leads to more molecules similarly as if you have low surface area or lesser surface free energy that may leads to less surface area and this less surface area may leads to less amount of molecules as per this abo concept we can say the surface free energy is directly proportional to the surface tension or we can say surface free energy is equals to surface tension to understand this surface free energy concept we need to take an example that we need to add a drop of soap water on soap films surface so this surface should be contains four edges like a b c and d let us discuss in detail about this so in the above example we need to have a film surface as we discuss in the above example we need to have a film surface which contains four edges a b c and d on this surface we just add we need to add the soap drop here this is the soap film or surface this is the drop of soap water and this will be the l length we can consider as initial length and once we applied some force some hanging force to this surface film surface the force will be acted in like this hanging force so what happens this length will be increases so the 
drop of slope will be increase its in distance from a to a dash d to d dash so as per this above concept work done can be written as force into distance it will be written as f into d so we are uh, applying the hanging force at the same time at the same time the surface tension surface tension also acts on the surface of soap film that can be written as f is equals to gamma into 2l since the film now having two lengths first initial length that is before applying the hanging force and then after applying the hanging force now we need to substitute f values in equation 1 the equation 1 is w is equal to f into d so w can be written as gamma into 2l into d this can be considered as equation number 3 here the distance and surface area and length this will be increases as surface area so we can write write this as delta a so now this w value will be gamma into delta a by using this equation by using this equation you can calculate the surface free energy now we'll discuss about the applications of surface free energy this surface free energy is applicable in in adsorption of gases on solid surface and to improve the physical stability of suspensions emulsions and collides as well and to improve the drug delivery system so these are the uh, detailed uh, class about the spreading coefficient surface free energy solubilization and detergency hope you understood thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates